Hello and welcome back to another Quantum X video. Today we're going to be looking at Linus's heavenly organs. Not those ones, but the ones that we sent to him. Uh, it's been a very long time since we sent them. It was actually almost eight months ago that he got the pieces. And in that time, he asked alarmingly few questions about them. So I don't know if it's going to be a disaster or if it was so perfect and self-explanatory that it will be a, a beautiful execution. So let's have a look. Quantum X. Recently, we showed off the one hundred thousand dollar desk PC. That okay, well, it look, looks like it's working. So that's a great start. Actually, worked in the end. We only showed you the destination, not the journey. So here it is: how to build a hundred thousand dollar desk PC. Yeah, so it's that easy. Just how to. Yeah, I forgot. It's five axis. I remember when we were checking out the CAD files together and I was like, why have you put fillets on absolutely every part? Because it's just going to be horrible to make. They really didn't hold back on machine time. When all's said and done, this 550 pounds of aluminum is going to be turned into just 65, which means we're going to have a lot, a lot of chips. Oh yeah, J just 65 pounds, like not even a lot. A lightweight desk. I couldn't help noticing that it's in a lot of pieces. Yeah, this right here actually arrived in the back of a car. Oh yes, done now. That that is that's exactly how machinists work here as well. You you go there, film for like two minutes, press play, the next day in the studio with the parts. It's too heavy, but it's completely empty. It doesn't even have its side panels or its glass panel. Okay. Okay, worst case scenario, we ask FlexiSpot for another controller or something. Oh, cool link. Here we go. Running late on that video. That's me ages ago. No, I mean... Was there a total of six pumps? Six. Six pumps. Six pumps, we'll get it done. Oh my god, this is going to take forever. Maybe a little bit faster. Yep. Pretty much all builds. Seems like it's all done. The loop's built and then days and days of cables. So that there's just fluid moving around between this giant reservoir pump distribution plate thing. So there's no purpose at all. Ah, uh, no purpose. Come on, Tim. Oh my God, that's unnecessary. Is that enough thermal compound? Probably. You know, there's definitely enough of Yeah, it. definitely enough paste. Ah, oh. oh, he's mounted the block, Goofy. Oh dear. What did they not think of? I just just saw then when they put the block on because the boards rotated, it's actually Goofy on the CPU. Um, should be the other way for the socket. Hopefully that gets, hopefully that gets fixed. We plan for it to be fixed and this is also where it gets really interesting for me because I've never seen this hardware. I've seen the full cat of the desk, I've seen our parts. Obviously, I didn't get to try them inside, but will it actually line up and have nice tubing straight back to the GPU, straight back to the CPU? Remains to be seen. I just kind of guessed where the socket place was from pictures. You know that there's a specific inlet and outlet on there, right? Uh, yeah, we'll just run the pumps backwards. <laughs> Did we account? <laughs> if you could run the pump backwards, you would still need a like mirrored version of the impeller and a mirrored version of the thing it fits in. Like just spinning it backwards wouldn't result in it sucking the coolant from the outside and blowing it out of the middle. It's like running a turbine backwards. So mm, no, but the CPU block direction can be reversed. Not for it. Yes. Are you sure? I have absolutely no idea. These tubes go flat from out of the block into the distribution block. And so there's no way for us to cross them. They're hard line tubes. We couldn't have this one come out to this side and then have this one magically teleport through it. That wouldn't work. When Jake and I built the VR gaming PC in the lounge, we discovered that the difference between installing these the correct way around and the not correct way around can be 30 to 40 the, the, degrees. What? Holy crap. It would be a disaster. What? what? <laughs> 30 to 40 degrees. No, maybe three to four, but that, even that's extreme. 
I think is what happened in the other Linus video was they had an active backplate and installed the tubes the wrong way around on the first gen of Vector active backplates we had. And there, when you get it wrong, basically the flow just goes directly through the block and you have absolutely no coolant passing through the cooling engine, through the fins. So yes, that makes sense. It's 40 degrees too hot because you effectively just have a passive piece of copper for the GPU. But for this block, it's just a block. It's not an active backplate. And it's if it were active backplate, it would be direct link anyway. So running the flow backwards would be like a couple of degrees. And it would make it hard to bleed if you had it vertical, but in, in the desk, horizontal, it would still bleed easy. I don't think it would cause really any noticeable problem. I have to say to your credit though, Tim. Ah, now they changed the CPU block to be the right way. Single horizontal in the middle wow. monitor. How big it is monitors that they actually managed to make the desk look small. I swear that must be like three 40 inch monitors. What's going on? Quantum X. So it looks like everything went really well for the team and everything came in smoothly. We didn't see much detailed footage of it, but it looked like the, the CPU tubes were really neat and as intended with their like long angle bands sweeping across. GPU tubes look perfect and the other side tubes, of course, we knew would be right because they're just between our parts that were custom built for the desk and our middle parts that were custom built for the desk. And yeah, kind of better than expected. Nothing got dropped and uh, hopefully it's working nicely and the CPU temps came down a fair bit from 100 degrees when they actually tightened the block on. As for the performance of the loops, I'm pretty sure they will be absolutely amazing. Being, being we persuaded them to put enough radiators in, I think the original plan just had like one big radiator on each side of the desk and we can figure out that we could actually fit all six 120s worth of cooling. Uh, big thanks to Tim for listening to us, being so flexible, uh, figuring out where we knew there were gonna be problems with cables and tubes and actually going back to the whole team and convincing them to change it, letting us do something different and something insane with it. I think the result really paid off and I can't wait for Carl to see it, uh, his reaction, and you know, hopefully it's all right for Minecraft. Uh, I'm gonna have a look now at your comments. So comments from our video that we posted about making it and uh, also from Linus's video. Okay, uh, the first comment that stood out to me on the Linus video was from MB Catboy, who said that they loved the uh, duality of engineering that was happening there, the two teams working together. And uh, when it came to the CPU block and, and uh, you know, Linus pulled up, had you actually thought about how that was gonna work? Well, I'm not sure if Tim and Alex really thought about it and it, that was kind of us in the background, like when we were making the reservoirs, the heat exchangers, uh, sort of had to treat them like a distribution plate. So stuff was symmetrical and nice and easy when it came to the build. And yeah, we thought about where it was gonna go, but we also didn't know 100% which motherboard they were gonna use. So we had to just make it uh, as adaptable as we could. And yeah, it, wor it worked out. Uh, we knew that the magnitude uh, for the CPU block would always kind of save them because they could reverse the flow if they needed to by uh, rebuilding the insert. So kind of collectively, yeah, there was a big potential for us to overlook something if Tim wasn't really sure that we kind of clocked onto it and if we didn't know if he checked it and they didn't ask questions and it went pretty good. I am on my 116 says, uh, anyone who's built a custom loop is probably thinking about the nightmare of maintaining that. Yeah, there's a hell of a lot of points and sources of leaks just within one of the components because the, uh, the reservoirs for the heat exchanging in the middle, they have more seals, more fittings just inside them than you would normally have in a whole loop. So, um, crazy amount of points of failure. We kind of 
prove them first by leak testing them way beyond their pressure. And then we also designed it in such a way that if, if there's a leak between the two sides, it's not critical. You know, all those parts are on the inside. Um, so all that really mattered was the, the outer seals to actually having a, a problematic uh, leak, but we're pretty confident in everything. We leak tested each part individually. So there's kind of two routes through those big distros, one uh, void through the inside of the copper tubes and one void around them. Uh, and we tested all of them with respect to each other and seem to be okay. As for maintenance, like replacing the coolant, uh, we really encourage them to go with clear coolant just so that you can see everything, but also because it's the most stable long-term. Uh, if Carl does need help with it though, at any point in the future, uh, we'll, we'll for sure stand by it and help with anything that's needed, any parts, uh, any work, any input, just hit us up. And if you have a system that's $100,000, also let us know. Yeah, Banshee Bernie correctly pointed out that the CPU block internals can be reversed and the insert can be flipped 180 degrees. So on the, on the outside of that block, there are two ports, but on the internals, there's like a little scoop that forms the inlet and the void it leaves around it is the outlet. So you can reverse that and pick up the coolant from either side. And on our little video, I also saw a bunch of comments, some really good ones. Uh, Weirdly, uh, ERS TJ4 saw and said that he was looking forward to a V3000 Plus video. I don't remember where we dropped that or if that was kind of teased somewhere in the background or no idea, but there will be a Quantum X V3000 Plus video coming very soon. Uh, and in that we will debut a new product that was inspired by the Linus project in which you can all effectively access a little piece of the the glamour that we brought to the desk build. So I won't say anything more now, but it will come. Chris and Mary Pham said they couldn't tell how we took down the distribution plates when we built them and the reservoirs and if we had a sequence for the screws. So we do. Um, to put it simply, we can't cross tighten them as you might expect a, a conventional like talking pattern for a wheel or for, a, for an engine head uh, because the top plexi is so flexible uh, and effectively when you when you tighten each screw down uh, it, it kind of pushes it in a wave so the way we build it up and the way we built it up in the time lapse is that first we would seat all of the o-rings in the channels we'll put little weights on them often we just use like fittings or plugs just to weigh them down until everyone is inside. Quickly take off all the weights, hope it stays there and put the lid on. When the lid's there, then we put in screws just around the extremes, like in every corner, just to hold it down and make sure the O-ring can't fall out. Then once that's done, we put all the screws in, uh, just like drop them in loosely and go around the whole thing, tighten everyone down. So as I described, it kind of pushes it in a wave. Uh, and to go from one screw to the next to the next. And then once the whole block is tightened down evenly, then we'll repeat it and actually torque everything for a second time. And they, they always move the second time because uh, if you imagine when, it, when the wave moves along, every time the next screw goes down, it takes a little bit of force off the previous one. Uh, so we basically just tighten it twice to eliminate that. One kind of harsh comment that I saw, uh, I don't want to just like pick out the great comments. Uh, Tipum said, how could we justify doing this project for one person? And why would we not uh, put this time into making a water block for a card that we don't cover or something? Uh, that's kind of the, ho the whole spirit of uh, Quantum X developments is that uh, if we take things just to the stage where we can prove it just enough that we can show it on camera, we can put it in a video, we can see how you guys react to it, then we can get a lot of value from not completing the whole project. So to take that to a retail product from there is a lot more work. We need to actually machine enough of them to have inventory of it. So that is instantly a big financial investment. Then we need to do all of the work behind the rest of the business. So we need to validate it, we need to test it, 
We need to uh, produce all the marketing material for it, list it on our website, inform all of our resellers, inform all of the customers, and then we can start selling a product. So it's a massive difference between showing something in a video that, okay, it may appear like a finished thing that Linus had, but it's a long way short of a retail product at that point. So that's how we kind of justify these products. And if the reactions are amazing when we finished it, then we will do it. And similarly, if we had a suggestion for a simple product from hundreds of users, we would also look very seriously into that. So we're not taking huge amounts uh, from other projects and anything that would be uh, worth it from all perspectives, either if it would be just a profitable product on its own or it would attach sales of other products for us, we would of course do it. Um, it's, it's fun that we can work on stuff like this and uh, I hope we can continue it. Plus, you know, a million people saw it in 24 hours. So uh, we're really grateful for the Linus team actually allowing us to do it and allowing us to show the products. And there was a comment from Darth Chewy saying that uh, it's incredible and he doesn't see a scenario where either the CPU or the GPU would like overheat in its own right. They're, they each have, quite correctly as he said, uh, three 240 millimeter radiators in each loop. Like why would you need the overkill of the third thing? Well. You wouldn't. I mean, th that was the brief. Uh, it was it was kind of inspired by a strange request from uh, the team who originally asked us to get involved. And Tim had said, "Can we make a reservoir that's split by a copper plate?" So he thought that th that would mean it would allow the two loops to equalize and give an advantage. And when when we sort of talked it through, we realized that actually. It would, but it would also adversely affect the other loop at some point. So making two loops and then having a heat exchanger just directly between them that's always running, you may as well make a single loop. So uh, that's how the idea came about. It's ridiculously overkill, way too much, don't recommend it, but you can do it. Uh, we wanted to prove that we could. That's exactly what Carl wanted because he needs 600 FPS for Minecraft, and that's that's how you do it. You know, that's some of the small compromises, like spending hundred thousand dollars, that you just have to make. Uh, thanks to everyone involved in the project. Uh, big thanks to on our side, uh, Dave and Simon for bringing the teams together and allowing us to get this to produce so quickly, uh, getting all the parts out to the Linus team, and of course. Thanks, Tim, for working with us. Thanks for being accommodating of all our concerns and allowing us to make something as epic as we did. Uh, hopefully, we get to collaborate again soon. So if you want to check out more Quantum X content right now, we're in the middle of our PS5 water block, and I expect the final build episode to be coming very, very soon. So if you liked it, drop us a like, subscribe for more crazy Quantum X things and all the other great stuff from EK.